I have a rule about being constructive, so I can't ask any questions right now because all of the questions that I have right now are rhetorical and they end with the word idiot. The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life. It's episode 301. It is the end of the second week of May of 2022. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about as we start yet another series of 100 episodes. That's right. We're doing at least 100 more, folks. (laughs) You heard it here first. (laughs) And that's right. We are here. We have so much to talk about and so much we can't talk about on the first and the only wrestling podcast. You know, 301 episodes ago, we were like, someone needs to start a wrestling podcast. (laughs) No one has done it yet. No one ever will. Mm -hmm. And look at us now. If not now, when is what we said, and and the time was right, and here we are, three hundred and counting, and now three hundred one. Yep. So there was a WWE pay per view or premium live event PLE. Are we trying to get PLE over as the <laughs> as the acronym there? Um, WrestleMania backlash happened this past weekend. It was a glorified house show, uh, with the exception of Charlotte Flair and Ronda Rousey. But there's a lot of news coming out of that show. There is some wacky stuff going on with Kota Ibushi in New Japan. The guy who has a history of concussions that I worry about his health. Mm -hmm. And uh, AEW Dynamite and uh, Rampage and whatever else is going on as they continue to barrel ahead towards their their double or nothing pay-per-view at the end of this month. We can start with WrestleMania Backlash. As I mentioned, glorified house show. Nothing wrong with it, but uh, pretty, pretty missable show. I thought, what did you think of the show? Yeah, it was it was it was just that it was a totally fine watch. I don't think if you watched that show, you'd be upset when you were when you were done. Um, it had some good wrestling on it. Cody and Seth, I thought had I liked that match better than their Mania match. I think um, I, I haven't really looked around uh, to see if that's like a controversial opinion or not but um i i really enjoyed that match and obviously it built off their their mania match a little bit too so you can say you couldn't have had a match that good without the first match either way but um other than that yep ronda and charlotte uh beat the tar out of each other and and ronda won the title so that's that's something isn't it i guess it is i guess it is (laughs) who's she gonna wrestle now (laughs) You know, we can let's just talk about all of it at once. So (laughs) you pointed out to me this week. They debuted Lacey Evans, re-debuted Lacey Evans after like five weeks of babyface vignettes. They debuted her as a heel on this past Friday's SmackDown. Mm -hmm. And everybody's like, what the heck was that all about? And then they played another babyface video for her. The same babyface video they played on SmackDown. They played for her on Monday Night Raw this week. And then PW Insider reports, Lacey Evans is going to the Raw brand and she's going to be a heel. And everybody's like, first of all, none of this makes any sense. All the videos were on SmackDown and they were clearly babyface videos. And then you pointed out, well, I guess they realized that in the Raw Women's Division, the heels they have are Becky Lynch, who they don't want to have do 400 jobs in a row, to mm-hmm. Bianca Belair, and uh, Dewdrop, who had they did against Bianca Belair two or three times leading up to WrestleMania, and Bianca beat her clean every time. And they don't see Dewdrop at the, that level anyway. Nikki A.S.H., who they think is a geek, and they may be turning baby face in this feuding with Dewdrop currently. So they don't got no heels is the point for Bianca Belair to wrestle. So they decided, well, we'll, we'll make Lacey Evans a heel and we'll have her wrestle Bianca, I guess. And that, but the problem then is that over on SmackDown, I don't know. You got Shayna and Natty and you got, but they're wrestling for the tag titles. Mm-hmm. I don't know if Carmella and I think Carmella and Zelina are on Raw. 
They were they, as of a few weeks ago. Again, not that that matters, as we've just discussed. Right, but they, they don't have anybody for... They don't have any heels for any of the babyface champions to wrestle now is the problem. Uh, well, you could turn uh, Smiley Raquel... What's her new last name? Rodriguez? Yes, Raquel Rodriguez could suddenly become a heel. <laughs> And yes. we could put her with Rhonda. Um, sure, yeah. why not? I mean, I can see Rhonda if if she has some say in what she does, wanting to do something with Shayna for sure, and maybe with Natty because obviously they were friends and trained together or whatever in the in her Rhonda's previous run. But as far as like top of the card main event stuff, which is I assume what you want for what you're paying Rhonda Rousey, uh, her wrestling Natalia or Shayna Baszler in their current forms is not, you know, that's second match on the card matches. So yeah, depending on what she wants and what they want out of her, I don't think that that's like great ideas. I mean, you, I, 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 I'd have to look at the NXT women. I mean, you, you have like Mandy down there who they could call up, I suppose. But but other than that, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of people kind of waiting in the wings. You have people like Shotzi and, and Aaliyah on SmackDown who they just, you know, they're like, they're treated like less than the 24 seven people somehow, which I don't know how that's possible, but um, so they yeah, they figured it, it out somehow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> somehow <laughs> they found um, a way. So yeah, I, I don't, uh, I don't like Rhonda's odds of being like uh, having like a lot of top marquee matches uh, with, with, if her opponents are Shayna and Natty and maybe Raquel Rodriguez. There is also the fact that those are her only two friends. And so maybe she just wants to work with her two friends. Mm-hmm. She's 96 Sean here. <laughs> well, <laughs> she's, she's hurt and or alienated into the entire locker room. So <laughs> <laughs> Apparently so. There may be some parallels there. Yeah, but yes. that was kind of what stood out to me out of the show is, I mean, and I don't know how long Charlotte's going to go, going to be away. When she comes back, you can always reignite that electrifying uh, feud uh, yes. for, for one of those summer stadium shows, I suppose. But uh, yeah, not, nothing nothing super strong there. And I, and I guess on the Raw side of things, you do have... There, it looks like they're going to do in the immediate. They're going to do a, a three-way program with Bianca now inserted into the Oscar Becky stuff. Sure. Um, but again, I don't know. I don't know what that says for Bianca's long-term chances of being the champion when, or when she's the champion, and also clearly, at best, the like number three woman on that show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There is that. Um... Yeah, so we'll see. We'll see where that goes from there. Uh, your favorite wrestler, Edge, and uh, <laughs> AJ Styles wrestled at Backlash. They had, boy, Wikipedia says that that match went 16 minutes and 25 seconds. And that feel, I think it went at least twice as long as that. <laughs> yeah, I'm. It's, it would be hard for me to say, honestly, which match felt longer, uh, the Edge and AJ match or the mad cat moss versus happy corbin match because they both got a lot of time and neither one of them were particularly good but at least like edge and aj kind of are stars on the show so that one maybe gets you know a little bit more leeway with the audience but not with me uh uh no the match the match was fine but they they did a wacky bs finish where they said that Damien Priest was banned from ringside, so he stood on the ramp right in front of ringside, and uh, and Finn Balor knocked him into ringside and into the ring, which was not a disqualification. And then they did the big, the big dramatic reveal that they had been foreshadowing via lighting choices. Uh-huh. Uh huh. As they <laughs> they turned Rhea Ripley and uh, and she joined with Edge because. Uh, she doesn't like fans coming up to her at airports, I believe was her reasoning. Yeah. Well, I don't blame her. First of all, second of all, they make movies, pal. Sure. sure. <laughs> they, you know, I, I say, I mentioned this off the air, but how worried would you be if you were Beth Phoenix <laughs> this week? I mean, let's, let's be real. Who, who do we know of historically that has respected the sanctity of marriage more than Adam Copeland? Honestly, it's a good and fair point. Yeah. Um, hey, and then uh, as you pointed out, uh, Ed's just chopped his hair off for no reason. 
Yeah, and like this, this is less of a complaint, more of just an observation. But like the one of the biggest box office matches they've ever done was a hair versus hair match, and it wasn't like that was in 1974. It was in what 2007? Yeah, something like that. So, so like I don't, I don't understand why they don't try that <laughs> once in a while. Like those, those matches are always memorable and well received because at the end you get that very memorable visual of someone getting a haircut against their will. So usually a bad guy on the show. So like, I, I don't understand why they just let like top guys on the show. Like if you're, if you're like, Oh, Austin theory is going to get a haircut. Who cares about that guy? But like, if your top star has really, really long hair, do an angle. Even if it's not a match, if you don't want to pin him, if that's the problem, do something <laughs> where, where the person he's shooting with, cuts his hair and so he then he chops it all off or something just the idea that they like one of their most the biggest successes ever financially was a hair match and they never think about it before like tops television stars on their programs completely shave all their hair off it's just fascinating to me and he's feuding with aj styles and both guys frankly look like they could be in a pantene commercial <laughs> <laughs> yes Yes, absolutely. So I just I just feel like that was tailor made, especially maybe because he's shooting with AJ for a hair match and you can do whatever banana peel finish and then go right back to, you know, putting edge over every other match after that. But just you do that one off AJ gets a roll up win or something and then edge gets his head shaved or gets his hair or you could do the Kevin Nash. You don't even have to you don't even have to shave your head completely. You could just get a get a haircut. <laughs> Get a stylish haircut. Huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So I guess the the rumored other person for that group is Champa. Mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I were him, I'd be crossing my fingers because I think the other place that Champa is going to end up is uh, unemployed when the next uh, round of quote unquote budget cuts happen. If uh, if he's not uh, if he's not in a group or something or some some sort of protected television television character, so uh, the being problem. the silent guy who wrestles Mustafa Ali, another guy they don't care about, is not going to keep you on television. But being an Edge's dumb crew might. There is a there is some truth to that, but also, are you? Can you just please jo- enter my mind's eye for just one moment and join me as I watch Vince McMahon watching Damian Priest, Champa, Edge, and Rhea Ripley standing side by side and Champa is shorter than all of them. <laughs> it's like, do you really think he's going to take this guy seriously? Well, I mean, they need maybe they need a Cedric Alexander who can take all the falls in their in their pins. They're going to turn him into Butch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. There's There's a role for a little guy and it's mostly to get pinned. <laughs> This guy, this guy went to NXT and became like one of the 20 best workers in the world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now he's he's going to be Butch 2.0. What do you think hurts him more? The fact that he's so short or the fact that he was like Hunter's boy? Um, I think ultimately the fact that he was short okay. will, hurt him, will hurt him more. All right. Because if it was just he was Hunter's boy, they Hunter's adopted son. They wouldn't have called him up. Mm. He'd be doing Roderick, what Roderick Strong is doing now on NXT. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> he could just be a tackling dummy for for uh, the uh, the forehead guy and the poker guy and uh, yes, the other ones. Yes, <laughs> the entire cast of NXT 2.0 that you just named. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the ones I know. Yeah, so Cody Rhodes uh, beat Seth, as you mentioned. Cody then wrestled Theory for the U.S. title on Raw. They had like a 15-minute match. It was like 13 and change or something. And then they did a DQ finish where Rollins attacked Rhodes again. So that feud must continue, even though Rhodes has beaten Rollins clean twice. Sure, why not? Omos and Bobby Lashley had one of the worst matches I've ever seen. <laughs> At WrestleMania Backlash. And we were, as the show was going on, we were chatting about this. And it's just like, as far as ma- laying matches out go, look, man, I've never taken a bump as, you know, everybody's like, 
you know, you can't curt it. You can't you have an opinion or criticize what we do unless you've taken a bump. I've never taken a bump, but I think I know more about laying out wrestling matches than whoever laid out Omos versus Bobby Lashley at <laughs> WrestleMania Backlash. Who, as it turned out, uh, the producer for that match was Abyss, Chris Abyss. <laughs> and Omos and Lashley had a match where the, the entire match was built around Lashley running off the ropes and crashing into a stationary Omos. And then he posted himself and got pinned. <laughs> <laughs> that was it for nine minutes. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was rough. And if I were... We talked about this a little bit, uh, I think, the first time these guys wrestled. But if I were if I were one Robert Lashley and I was coming off of a so- shoulder injury and I was 47 years old or whatever he is now, 44, 45, uh, that guy is not. And you're telling me I have to go work this guy for like three or four straight shows where he can't do anything. And, he, and plus, he's a giant. So we only want him bumping like maybe twice a match. So you're going, you're telling me that I'm going in there and I'm going to have to take all of the bumps and do all of the physicality and do all of the movement because he can't do anything. That is not something that I'm, I'm willful, willingly signing up for if I am, if I am bodacious Bob Lashley, but I uh, guess we got to get one more match. At least they're doing a cage on raw. Yeah. I assume we'll get a nice gimmick spot where somebody goes through the cage. It's mm-hmm. been a couple of years since we've done that. So there's that. And uh, the uh, the Bloodline and uh, Drew McIntyre and RK Bro had a uh, had a pretty nice six man tag to close that show with absolutely no stakes whatsoever. <laughs> Although the, the news coming out of this, though. Was, I guess Roman Reigns did something resembling a farewell speech at a house show in Trenton, New Jersey. And set the uh, the internet all uh, a buzz about whether he's leaving WWE or whether he's going on hiatus or whether he's just signed a contract extension that calls for far fewer house show dates or whether he signed an extension that calls for far fewer house show dates and he's taking a hiatus. Anyway, lots of talk about Roman and his future going forward this week. And frankly, I still don't know what's going on. <laughs> uh, I guess in the immediate, he's not advertised or on the poster for the Hell in a Cell show next month anymore. Correct. So seems like he won't be working that show. Um, and then they also pulled him from a lot of TV advertising, but that might but just we'll be-, be adding him in at some right. point. Yes. So that seems more like they just don't know logistically maybe when he'll be free which I don't know if that suggests that he will be filming something in his time off or what, but it seems like they're just unsure. Other than that, they think he'll be there for the, the two big stadium shows this summer. Um, it seems like, yeah, they're just, they're just unsure, which really is, you know, it's fascinating because they didn't, <laughs> they didn't have to unify the belts. Like, conceivably, he could take the summer off and you could still have a world champion on your shows, but you chose to unify the belts and put them on the guy that you never beat, who then is now maybe taking a couple of months off. Yes. And all you had to do is do what they did with the with with the Ultimate Warrior after WrestleMania six. You just have him vacate one of them. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You can keep the, the big blue one. And, and let Cody, who said that he's going to become the world champion his father never was, let Cody win the WWE one. You don't, he doesn't even have to do a job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's fine. It seems like that would be best for everyone. But I guess they've they've decided not to do that, at least not right now. So in the immediate, they, they chose. And we talked about that Sunday night at the time. Uh, it was kind of strange that Roman Reigns won that match. <laughs> um, not surprising necessarily, because, you know, it's... You know, it's not really ever a bad bet to bet that the match will end with Roman winning with his move. But um, because I thought I thought the obvious thing was Drew pins an Uso to to set up a world title match down the line. But maybe because now they aren't quite sure what show that world title match will be on. They're like, well, just for now, we'll just have Roman win and uh, 
we can build Drew up some other way once we figure out when that match, if and when that match is going to happen. Right. Well, Roman has a bunch of children, a bunch of young children. He has a bunch of fake teeth <laughs> and he has a bunch of money. So I would say good for him if he doesn't want to work so much anymore. Good for him. Yeah. I mean, it's it's funny because they did it again. They swore they'd never like build the shows around one guy ever again. Right. Unless it was like someone with the last name McMahon. Yes. And they accidentally did it again for two years. And now that guy's going to be working at least maybe a less frequent schedule. And those shows are going to be really interesting in the next couple of months is to see what do you got when, when Roman's not around? Cause I mean, we, I guess we kind of got a taste of that in the lead up to this past pay-per-view because it was a lot of Usos and Randy Orton working both shows like Randy <laughs> Orton and Riddle work in both shows to uh, make people care about a match that they may or may not do and may or may not deliver on the unification stipulation for the tag belts down the line. But yeah, it seems like in, in the immediate, they don't, they don't got a lot of guys other than, I mean, you got your, your Cody and Seth level guys who are protected, but don't feel yet. And obviously it's early for Cody, but they don't feel as important as Roman, certainly. And then below that, you got, you got your Ortons and Riddles and Usos. And then below that, you got a bunch of stuff, a bunch of stuff that Vince McMahon likes to tinker with, but uh, <laughs> yeah. yes. not a lot of, uh, not a lot of like super protected tippy top acts in the way that they have b- protected uh, Roman for the last couple of years and certainly no one that they build the show around the way they've built it around Roman for the last two years. Very much so. So Kota Ibushi apparently is trying to get himself fired from New Japan for some reason. He's feuding with someone in the office. He's talking about how they pressured him to come back from an injury before he's ready to come back from an injury. Now, that doesn't sound like something a wrestling promotion would do, trying to get <laughs> someone to rush back early from an injury. Particularly when they run an absolutely ridiculous schedule. I don't know what to make of this, other than what I mentioned briefly at the top of the show, other than that Kota Ibushi is pushing 40 years old. He has a history of concussions. He has a lot of injuries. I worry when someone like that uh, suddenly becomes unhinged uh, on social media and and like takes his his feud with someone in the new japan office public it's very bizarre yeah it uh it's very un- i think uncomfortable and and strange and yes first and foremost you just hope the guy is like mentally okay yes um and not you know a danger to himself or others around him um and beyond that yeah it's the only thing and there's a lot of uh, google translate sleuths out there Ugh. Uh, casting uh, certain aspersions about exactly what the specifics of his beef are. I don't, I don't recommend doing that unless you are confident the person that is telling you this speaks fluent Japanese and <laughs> yes. reads fluent Japanese for that matter. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, or, you know, when it comes to wrestling reporters, who they're talking to and how close they are to the person in and, and or people involved um i would just i would be cautious about what you believe or what you don't believe it just it looks real messy i do wonder if he if he that's i mean the your mind races to go let's say he gets his wish and he he goes home and he's not and he's fired or released or whatever um i don't i don't know what what the climate is like in japan for other places that he could work there. I don't, I don't see him moving to the United States full time. Um, so, and if he did, the obvious place for him to work is currently doing a co-promotion with new Japan. So uh, I don't, I don't know what his uh, professional options would be if this relationship does uh, end as sourly as it appears to be, but yeah, as it is now, I would just advise everyone to take whatever anyone tells you is going on <laughs> with a little bit of a grain of salt and, uh, and just 
yeah, again, if you're if you're if someone's translating something he said or tweeted for you, just just double check, make sure they actually speak the language. <laughs> sure. AEW. Um... <sighs> oh boy. Tony Khan has uh, announced this week that he's made tri- or had trios titles made. Okay. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Great. All right. The got, I mean they got a lot of they got a lot of factions. They got a lot of sure where and there's always like two or three guys in each faction not doing anything. So sure. Six man belts is an excuse to put a bunch of good TV matches that would otherwise be would have have no reason to put together. You can put them together because it's for the six man belts. So it's a good excuse to find a way to get more good wrestlers on television at least theoretically we need more things happening on these shows it's really <laughs> what you're advocating for here yeah and, uh, yeah sure mjf i guess there's a report this week that in two years he's leaning towards leaving <laughs> aew i would not report that if i were in charge of reporting things but someone reported that this week so, so. seems like the guy's gonna go whoever pays him the most money i think yeah, and he probably should. You know, yep. he's young. Yep. And uh, you know, we when we get closer to that date, we already kind of touched on this a little bit, I think a couple of weeks ago when the FDR story came out. Yes. Um, but this is at minimum, we are two years away from this being like a serious topic of contention. Um, obviously in the months leading up to it, so at least 18 months, let's say, when he's when he's under a year left. <laughs> then maybe it becomes a more interesting topic to me. But as of now, it's like, yeah, okay, well, maybe he doesn't love the storyline he's doing right now, or maybe he thinks he should be getting paid more money. A lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people in wrestling probably think they should be getting paid more money than they currently are. And maybe, and maybe he should. So, but at this point, it kind of seems like a moot point. Um, if, if he's not up, if he can't go anywhere else for two more years. Yes. The Owen Hart tournaments finally began this week after months of qualifying matches. Mm-hmm. Um, that's fun. Dr. Martha Hart was a dynamite this week. Those tournaments are rolling on. They will conclude. I guess there's two matches on next week's dynamite where they, uh, they have Joker mystery opponents. Is there a chance that one of them is actually the Joker from the movie Joker? <laughs> If if star of stage and screen Joaquin Phoenix came out in full Joker makeup, I do think that would be a contention for the greatest greatest night in the history of our sport. I'd have to say, uh, I hate to use tired wrestling memes, but I think that's that would qualify. But yeah, yeah I, I guess that's the thought. Obviously, if you're doing two surprise opponents on the same show, <laughs> one of those can be you're bringing back somebody who already works there who's just been away for a while. But do you feel like we're getting a debut? Like there's as far as like the women's side, there's, you know, there's the the former Tegan Knox, there's Athena slash Ember Moon, there's Mia Yim, like there's people out there. Right. People think people think it's Athena Ember Moon. Mm -hmm. So that's that's certainly like that. That was where my mind went for that. And then for the men's side, it's like, well, from what we understand, Miro's been been healthy and doing like a television pilot and hanging out for a while now. So it feels like it's time to cycle him back into television. If, if he's ready and, and his schedule is free. So you could put him there or obviously the, the name everyone keeps talking about. If it's a, a new male star coming in, which gosh, we just need so many more of those Uh, uh, Claudio Cesaro, right? Like that's the obvious one. If it's a, if it's a new person. Yeah, I guess that's, at this point, I somehow had forgotten about um, Claudio, who's <laughs> apparently priced himself out of the Indies. Is the is the uh, is the word? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a lot of either didn't hear, didn't didn't get a favorable answer, or just didn't respond at all to a lot of booking inquiries since he's been a free agent. Yeah. Um, and they, I guess they're finally putting some uh, putting some steam behind CM Punk and Hangman Page. It's been kind of a weird build because 
Hangman Page wasn't there one week because he had COVID the week that they announced the match, I think. And then, or the week, yeah, I think that was what happened. And then mm-hmm. Punk was gone for a couple of weeks filming a TV show. So really kind of a strange build to this world title match at their paper <laughs> at their pay-per-view <laughs> in two weeks. Yeah, uh, so, so last week in Baltimore at the show we were at, Hangman was there, and he, they seemingly really hit hard that he's going to be the heel in this promo, which I again I think is really interesting. Not um, not not sure about that either. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean it worked in in that building. Like he got booed, he did have to kind of beg for it because he like went after a fan wearing a CM Punk shirt. Right. And told him he was going to want to get a refund. He was going to beat up punk so bad or whatever. So, um, but that, that seems to be the direction they handled. And then this week they were in long Island, which is, which is CM punks Montreal now. And <laughs> so he's a, he's a baby face everywhere else, allegedly. Uh, but, uh, but a heel in, in, in long Island. So everybody booed him. He worked heel against John silver and then used Hangman's move to beat John Silver and then uh, offered Hangman a handshake afterwards and Hangman flipped him off and everybody cheered. So I am going to be really fascinated by what that environment is like, especially at that pay-per-view in Las Vegas. I'm sure you will have some traveling fans coming in. So uh, maybe it will be a a super pro punk because he's obviously still, you know, for Unless unless they, they really mess things up, he's going to be their biggest star for a while. So he maybe they will favor him. Maybe it'll be a split reaction. But there is that thought that I feel like eventually is going to creep into people's head that Hangman is our day one homegrown boy and, and Punk is the outsider who came in two years late after other people had already set the table for him. And... Right. If you know, I don't know if they want to point that out on television, <laughs> like if yeah. they would have Hangman Page say that. But I mean, I feel like that sentiment, if it doesn't exist yet, that will eventually be what turns Punk heel in this company. <laughs> um, so I guess I'm just curious to see if that's coming sooner rather than later. Very intriguing, yes. Um, let's see what else we have for we get out here. Um, Darby Allen almost died. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the dumber spots I've ever seen. And think of the ground that covers <laughs> just Involving between the matches <laughs> of these two men alone. Right. right. Just with, just considering those two guys, Darby Allen and Jeff Hardy wrestled on Dynamite this week. Darby Allen jumped off the top of the ladder. To me, the dumb part was. I mean, the spot itself was really dumb. But the fact that they, he did it onto chairs rather than tables was the dumbest part to me. Yeah, that was a really bizarre choice. Um, and I will give I will give Jeff Hardy credit. He protected that boy's head and neck really well. He caught him. Yes, he d- he did not miss this. He yep. he caught him. He protected the head and the neck. Darby's tailbone still went splat on the chairs, but. Yes. Given given what could have gone wrong on that, that was a really good job by Jeff. <laughs> that yeah. being said, yes, under no circumstances would I have done that. I mean, I wouldn't ask Darby to do that at all, much less to do it and have. And again, I'm sure it's those guys maybe coming up with ideas. I don't, I don't know who the the coach or agent or whatever they call agents in that company uh, who helped maybe put help them put this together was. But uh, wow. That I'm was, sure it was their. I'm sure it was their own idea. Sure, um, and it was. I mean, it was spectacular. I I also thought it was wild that like that wasn't the the bump leading to the finish. Like they oh, yeah. did they did that coming out of commercial, <laughs> and then they wrestled for like six more minutes. And Je- Jeff still did a swanton onto the steps. Mm-hmm. All Crazy man. Dar- Darby still did a, a coffin drop on the apron. Yeah. And like, I mean, it, and it all got reactions. Yes. Um, but I, I feel like nothing, nothing they did after that ladder, crazy high ladder bump uh, was as spectacular. So I thought like arranging those stunts in that way was, was also very fascinating. Um, but then I, I did appreciate that all these years later, Jeff Hardy got to use the, the triple H finish against his, uh, an opponent. Yep. 
he got to beat the up and comer with a by taking his finish and then cradling him out of it. Yep. Uh, yeah, I thought that was. I always love that finish, mm-hmm. <laughs> despite it being deployed too many times in, in Triple H Jeff Hardy <laughs> matches. It's like it is kind of a brilliant finish, and so yeah, I, I pop for that. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I mean the tournaments. It's off to an interesting start so far. The Tony Storm beat Jamie Hader. I thought that was. One of the better televised AEW women's matches of late. Yep. Um, they just, again, hit each other really hard and had a good pace to it and were on the same page. Yep. So you set up, which I guess, again, is interesting that they put Brit against the Joker because based on the tag match we saw on Rampage in Baltimore, I figured with Tony printing Brit, that's setting up those two people to wrestle each other in the tournament. But they're on the same side of the bracket, I believe. And Brit would have to beat the Joker to advance to face Tony. So, which is quite, which I, I took that to mean Brit is beating the Joker, <laughs> and then Brit is beating Tony. Yeah, I mean that was my thought too. Is like if Tony, <laughs> Tony's winning on winning the tag on the show before the main show, then Brit's probably winning that and probably the whole tournament. If we're honest, I mean, what it's like, I got no, I got look. Whatever you want to do is fine. <laughs> <laughs> not what i would do whatever you want to do is fine and brit brit's brit's the biggest personality and the most push character she should probably always beat the women's champion yeah. like until until further notice like i got i got no problem with that like mm-hmm. if that's what they want to do that's fine um we're both uh, are you go, what are you which new japan show are you going to this weekend if what? any i'm i'm going to the one in washington dc with okada on it what am I doing? I'm going to the, the Philadelphia show on Sunday, uh, the day after, which does not have Okada on it, as far as I know. So No, it has Tanahashi, though. No, it has Tanahashi, Suzuki, Osprey, and then whoever wrestles on New Japan Strong. Ishii's doing a tag. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they, they announced a few matches for it. It looks like a, a good show. I was going to say, if, if they had done Moxley and Tanahashi in a singles, I might have impulse last minute decided to try to go to the dc show as well yeah but since that's a four-way i don't feel like i'm missing too much of that um so uh but yes uh we will both be in attendance for various new japan events this weekend so hopefully some good wrestling for all the driving we'll be doing yeah and i was trying i think i thought there was one more thing but i I can't remember what it is now so it obviously couldn't have been that important (laughs) All right. Uh, oh, the Cody Rhodes, uh, Seth Rollins, or uh, the Steve Austin. Good Lord. The Cody Rhodes Broken Skull Sessions. Check that out. I'm only uh, like 35 minutes into a, a almost two hour show, but oh, it's so great. Cody Rhodes and Steve Austin talk, talk and shop for two hours. Oh, it's so great. I love that. I love I love when Steve is always good on those shows. Yes, but it's especially good when he has somebody that can really sink. He can sink his teeth into like when Steve gets it. Yep. <laughs> like yep. when you see him interview, like I always point to the one he did with Paige. as like <laughs> he just looked so lost because he's talking to a 19 year old or at the point, probably 23 year old British right. woman. And and right. uh, and he just doesn't know what to say to her. <laughs> Right. Um, beyond like whatever prepared interview questions he had, whereas somebody like Cody, he can just he can just shoot the ish and they can go yeah. off on tangents and go every which way. And Cody knows all about wrestling history. And so they can talk about yep. old Southern wrestling or modern stuff or whatever. And that that's going to be entertaining. Yep. 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 All right. Uh, so that's it, everybody. Number 301 is uh, is in the books. So till next time, I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. We have at least 99 more to go. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. <laughs>
we've bet too much to uh, <laughs> to fold now. That's right. <laughs> we bet so much that we have to see it see the hand through. Right. It's like uh, it's like all those those crypto people who are watching their life savings go away this week. Oh my lord. I only all right. So uh, I've talked about this before. Mm-hmm. January 1st or the first week of January 2021, I put a thousand dollars into in a Robin Hood account. It's like, what's what's a large enough sum of money that is worth investing, but also if I lose it, <laughs> we're not gonna lose the house. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So I so I put a thousand dollars into a Robin Hood account. And for a while just you know buying all of the stocks that were doing well at the time tesla facebook amazon even if these are companies that i want nothing to do with it's like <laughs> really really if you sit and think about it it's like do i really want to be in business with tesla do i really want to be in business with mark zuckerberg or <laughs> elon musk mm-hmm. and it's like no of course i don't but they were the stocks doing well so you bought them or whatever after like 10 or 11 months, I turned a thousand dollars into eleven hundred dollars, which is not, you know, is n- nothing to write home about. But 10 percent return on your investment is pretty darn good. Sure. So then I started tinkering around, tinkering around in, in buying a Bitcoin and, and Ethereum. And I last check uh, at some point last week, um, my thousand dollars was now worth $889. <laughs> so so I really, really encourage everyone not to invest in cryptocurrency. <laughs> it's one of those things where I was uh, having to explain this to an old person at, a, at the bank not too long ago, like what cryptocurrency yes. was. And it was hard for me because everything that I would say to like discourage someone from getting involved in cryptocurrency is also kind of what I believe about all currency. (laughs) Sure. The The one big difference being that yes, like any other type of money, it's fake. We made it up. It doesn't really have any inherent value besides what we arbitrarily decide it does. Right. But it's also unlike quote unquote real money. It's not particularly well regulated. (laughs) And it's yes. really easy to, you know, trade. I mean, there's, you know, a trade and people can buy it from themselves and then sell it back to themselves and artificially inflate things. And then like, there's a lot of things you can do that you can't do with regular stock because it's you no, know, because people, <laughs> because all the senators are a bunch of old nerds who don't understand what it right. is or what people are doing with it yet. And so they haven't figured out that they need to, that there probably needs to be oversight. Cause at that point, then it just becomes like any other investment and maybe it'll work out. Maybe it won't. But at this point right. it's like, yeah, it's basically the same and, and just as volatile as any other investment, except much worse. Cause nobody, <laughs> nobody that has any power is paying any attention to it. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yes. That's a very good way of putting it. I will, I will point out here are the companies that I've lost significant money on. <laughs> Amazon, mm. Facebook, Nvidia, who makes computer chips, mm-hmm. Camping World, mm. JP Morgan, <laughs> AT and T, and the S and P five hundred and S P five hundred index, which is the top five hundred stock, just an index fund of the top five hundred stocks, has lost thirteen percent of its value since I, <laughs> I've I've made money on CVS, Microsoft. Google, AstraZeneca, Coca-Cola, Target, and Apple. Man, Coca-Cola just never lets you down. <laughs> Whether you're drinking their fine energy products or you're investing in their fine company. It's worth pointing out. I showed up to a family gathering this week with the Coke energy in hand. You sure did. As I continue to try to save my favorite brand i was like are you doing sponsored content on your family right now (laughs) yes yes i'm a coke influencer thank you (laughs) yeah all right well now we've done an awkward pause (laughs) maybe i'll edit it out we'll see 
اجر کی بان کی بنام